basically my background, I'm British. Um, I apologize if my accent is slightly tarnished. I've been in East Africa for 20 years. Um, I've been, I was educated here. Uh, I was educated here. My family would obviously d deny that. But uh, I was educated in the UK. I went to college, the London College of Printing, for a year, part-time course. And then um, af after that, I worked as a, as a photography assistant to a fashion photographer in Victoria, Angelo Valentino who was a remarkable fellow, big wavy black hair, who spoke uh, English with an Italian accent when he was with models, and he spoke English with a North Hackney accent when he was with me. It was, <laughs> anyway. But I learned lots, I learned lots with him. He was an amazing fellow. Um, I had an opportunity when I was working as a professional photographer in London after that to go to Uganda. So I went to Uganda and I did a job for a coffee company there. Following that, I came back here and I wanted to find a photography book on Uganda, um, which I didn't do. I couldn't find one anywhere. So uh, I thought to myself, well, why do, I'm a photographer. Why don't I go to Uganda and do a book on Uganda? And uh, uh, I remember mentioning this to, to, uh, to my family at the time. I was, I was about 20 years old. And uh, my father, who's a lawyer, he sort of laughed heartily and said, yes, yes, off you go. And uh, so anyway, a few months later, I did. I went to Uganda and I did a book. And Uganda was, a, was an amazing, is an amazing country, and I ended up staying there uh, for five years um, after a six-month shoot for the book. The book was published by Quilla Press, um, Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. I worked then as a photographer in, in Kampala, doing a whole broad range of, uh, of work. And then uh, I went to Tanzania in 1997, where I've been since then for the last 15 years. I've been based in Dar es Salaam for most of that. So um, we'll start with a bit of travel photography. These are, this is the Maasai. Um, he's a Maasai Moran. He's a warrior. And uh, I've got a, a, a three little pictures of Maasai. And one of the things about travel photography is uh, you're telling a story. And it's, it's a very interesting uh, concept because you can tell a story lots of different ways using different light composition and actually a different situation. So this, obviously, he was standing there. I moved around, I've got him like this, it's a very dramatic picture, it's a nice picture. Here is a very different picture. So here you've got uh, Maasai, this is much more reportage, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's more complex, it's more messy as an image, and, uh, but it does tell a story. So um, here you've got the Maasai, and here is a cow, and this is a bow and arrow. And this is a, uh, a Maasai circumcision ceremony for the boys. And what they do is the, the boys, they drink, uh, um, sorry, the, the, the elders, in fact, they drink blood mixed with milk from the cow. And what they're doing here is they have to puncture the jugular, I think it's the jugular of the cow. Uh, they have to, thank you. They have to puncture it with a, uh, a bow and arrow. With a, it's got a thick edge with a stud on it, uh, a, a short stump. They puncture it so the blood can come out easily and, and it, the wound heals up. It's telling a story. Here's another look at Marseille. Um, it's an alternative look. And uh, a lot of my work that you'll see this evening is using this uh, technique. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about this sort of technique in different ways. Uh, uh, I heard one uh, very well-known wildlife photographer talk about his, it as his impressionistic technique. Um, his impressionist technique, uh, referring to Monet, Manet, Degas, and people like that. Um, I'd love to be able to do that, but I'm not quite so erudite. Um, it's, it's, it's a creative technique. It's an alternative look. It's taking the, the still image and creating an artistic image. And I, I really love it. And again, this is Marseille. So that's three very different looks. Uh, at Marseille. Um, this is Zanzibar. Color, light, using different sort of angles. Hopefully my horizon is straight. I can't see from this angle. Yeah. But the blue, the, the blues, I love the contrast here and it, it looks great. Big up on a wall this. And um, the beautiful seas of Zanzibar. So here now this is uh, a little bit less Romantic image. This is uh, in a, a small town called Mpanda. It's about three days' drive west from Dar es Salaam. 
it's about the glorious light and the shape and the texture, and it's telling a story. Who owns the bike? Where have they gone? Do they live in the house? Um, the Maasai sometimes find themselves carrying umbrellas, and uh, I caught this fella, and it just struck me as quite a bizarre picture, as it wasn't either sunny above or raining. But uh, there we are. And I feel I get away with my wonky horizon on this occasion. You may dispute that, of course. OK, so um, again, this is using my slow shutter speed. It's pre-dawn, panning. Um, this is one of my favorite images. It's uh, Zanzibar. It's a fisherman just going out. This, this is a reef here. And they're just coming out and going around out fishing. And images like this, um, they're, they're quite hard to do. And you can shoot a lot of them, and they don't work. And for me, I feel they work when you maintain the ability to interpret what it is you're photographing. And I've got a picture later on where we can decide whether I've done it or not. But this one, you, you know, it's very clear. The guy's standing up. He's got his thing. He's got his thing there. You, you know, you can see the rudder and everything. You know, you've got lovely detail here in the, in the sail. And so for me, it works. <laughs> OK, so now we have moved into the hotel and safari business. So I spend uh, hotels, lodges, camps, safari companies. I'll go to their places and photograph um, their activities, their lodges, that sort of thing. Um, this is a, a particularly fun story. It was a little while ago. And uh, there was a very, very wealthy American gentleman who had this property in, uh, in Kenya. And he had airplanes and helicopters and horses and all sorts of things. And uh, we had, there was a big creative team of us there to do the shoot. And uh, we had this idea, wouldn't it be great to get a, a model on a rock doing yoga in front of you know, a sunrise? So we found the rock. We saw it from the ground. Anyway, in the, in the pre-dawn, we went in the helicopter. And this rock that she sat on is actually about this wide. It's about that wide. And then it goes off. And as we flew up in the pre-dawn, it was covered in baboons. So we flew up, and the baboons all scattered. And then, uh, and then we realized that there was baboon um, blessings left on the rock, if you like. So then the helicopter pilot had to then brush them off with his rotor. That was all very exhilarating. And then we eventually we managed to drop her off. Um, <laughs> airbrushing. That is airbrushing. So then we, we managed to drop her off on the rock. And, uh, and then we hovered and hovered and hovered. And eventually, the sun rose with the pilot complaining because hovering a helicopter apparently is very tricky. Um, and so then we got the shot, um, which they liked. So this was another shoot. Um, this is actually, the, I'm afraid the quality is not amazing because it is the scan. It's a, it's a scan of a print. It's an E6 film processed through the C41 method. Um, it involved bag of films being DHL to the UK. They were processed in a lab. They were then DHL back, uh, the contact sheets, and then a message to the printer. The printer then printed, and then DHL the prints back to me in Africa that I then give to the client. The client then scanned the picture um, and put it into their brochures. Uh, of course, today, you can do all this in a few minutes on a computer. Here, just throwing in a, a, a drop of color just to create a sort of feeling that you could be there on this beach. You, this is yours. You left it. And on we go. So uh, OK, so this, um, this is in Mozambique. It's, a, it's another private island. And you know it's a sort of hero shot for a brochure kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and I got it on the second take. So I was being very pleased with myself. And there's no Photoshop here or Lightroom at all. So, right. So now we get on to the animal pictures. OK. Not that my first, my first wildlife picture that I'm showing you doesn't 
reflect me as an individual at all, obviously. Um, it's, this, is, uh, this is a brown snake eagle, and uh, uh, it, um, yeah, it's, a, it's obviously it's a lucky shot. It's a very rare shot, and um, and yeah, it's it's very popular. People like buying it. So um, this is about birds. This little section we're going to do is now about birds, and then we're going to talk about animals, and then we're going to talk about landscapes. So on birds. To be honest, you know, birds are really tricky. I don't know who's tried, I mean, you've all tried photographing birds. Um, uh, I've seen some beautiful pictures of Simons about the raptors at the, those places. Um, uh, I find photographing birds very tricky. I've recently uh, picked up a new 600 mil from uh, a new Nikon 600 mil from Grays, of course, yes. And, uh, and that does help because before I had a manual one. And so it's, it was about, about weighed about eight kilos, and you had to use two hands to focus, so it was a bit tricky. Really. Um, anyway, so this is a pearl-spotted owlet, um, and uh, very rare to see them out in the day. Um, beautiful, beautiful creatures. Little bee eater. Um, you can see the light's a bit flat, but I've been trying for years to get a full-frame shot of this. So I finally got one, and light's a bit flat. Blow, blow out the background. And there he is. And I like having a bit of space. The twig worked for me, space. Bang him on the left. Um, birds, tricky. Um, lilac breasted roller. Beautiful colors. And uh, again, great fun to be able to get him full frame. Um, obviously, no cropping. No, 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 no. Um, and, then, and then, obviously, this, this branch was rather torturous, but. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful bird in beautiful light. You got the texture. Tawny eagle. So uh, again, I, just to make the picture more interesting, I put him down in this, in this spot. Um, you can't actually see, the picture is actually in focus. Um, what you can't see is uh, I've got his eyelid cut, his inner eyelid cutting across, which is quite fun. And here is a, um, a light morph tawny eagle. And uh, shooting birds, I mean, it's very tricky shooting birds because either they're like this, perched on a tree, or they're flying. And if they're flying, it's very, obviously, it's very hard to shoot them. And if they're stationary, well, they, they look like they're stationary. So they, there's not much in between, in betwixt or between. So um, this fella, the position that I was in and, and the way that he's looking, um, I found him very grand, and he's an eagle. He's a very, very prolific eagle, um, uh, and um, I found I like the grandeur of the way that this one was framed. So um, again, uh, it's uh, it's slightly different. It's uh, it's from that position. I've intentionally whopped up the contrast to blow out the back. I like it as a strong feeling where the feet going and. That sort of thing. They're in the grass. So this is all grass here, which I've just blown out. So um, this is, again, this is one frame. This is untouched in Photoshop or any other manipulating camera. What you can see, um, hopefully, uh, well, perhaps somebody should actually tell me. So, it's, so here's. It's a pack of wild dogs attacking a baby wildebeest. So, I mean, technically it's not the most perfect picture, but it is a, it's a very, very powerful picture because in Tanzania, wild dogs are extremely, extremely rare. They're getting shot, blown up, hunted by the local people, by, Ma by Maasai, and uh, and, um, and so it's very hard to actually see them at all. So to see them hunting is, is an, a phenomenally rare uh, experience. So I was very lucky here to see them. And you can just see there's one fellow in the back there. You see he's at the back. Um, they're amazing hunters. They're incredible, incredible um, animals. They're very, very sociable. They're very, very effective. They're, 
the second most effective predator, the first being the uh, cheetah, in terms of their kill rate, the success kill rate. And they're very sociable. Okay, we've, I've slightly, uh, sorry, it slightly got cropped at the edge there. But here, um, again, this is using the long exposure. And it's, uh, I, this is another one of my favorite images because it's, it's very, very special to see, as I was saying, very special to see dogs hunting and then to, to, to be able to capture it in this way. Uh, I, I was very happy with. And, um, um, and you'll be delighted to know that this little fella survived this hunt. Um, she was incredible, the mama. She got tired about, about here. She got tired and stopped with the baby behind her and then charged the dogs head down with great ferocity. Ferocity? For, yeah, ve velocity and ferocity. And, uh, and the dogs weren't having any of it. So they ran off. They killed another one five minutes later. Yeah. Um, so wildlife comedy. Um, yeah, the art shop. I mean, commercially, in a bizarre sense, uh, this is one of my best sellers, which always depresses me royally. <laughs> you know, I come up with these amazing artistic images, and they, no, no, let's have, where's the warthog bum? Anyway, it's, uh, I was, uh, you know, from here to there, it was, it was a habituated or semi-habituated warthog at the camp. So um, they can be quite violent warthogs, in fact. So um, chimpanzees in Mahali National Park, completely wild, um, again, ferocious. And shooting animal portraits, for me, you're trying to, trying to tell something about the character of the animal. I'm trying to, when you look at it, you think, you know, it imparts something to do with the animal. And I felt that this shot, uh, you know, I managed to get enough space around the eyes and the, and the face to make it viable. I felt there was, a, there was a, a seriousness, there was a gravitas about this chimp. And the, the chimps uh, in this park are, well, like all chimps, they're actually very brutal, very violent, and, uh, and not really like PG Tips chimps. So another way of, of illustrating something about, uh, about animals or predators is uh, putting them into their environment. So here is a cheetah, um, teeny weeny, as my son would say. Uh, but it's, it's, in, it's, in, uh, it's in his environment. And it's gone onto the rock. You know why he's gone onto the rock. He's looking for things to eat. You know there's nothing for miles around. But that doesn't matter because he can run at 100 kilometers an hour or something. So, so. Um, I'm fond of that picture. Sorry? <laughs> right, okay, good, thank you for that. So, so now, um, the wildebeest migration, I mean, it's, it's very hard to photograph the migration. I don't know if anyone's heard of the wildebeest migration. One and a half million w wildebeest, okay, <laughs> it's on the telly. Um, so, uh, this is just trying to sh to illustrate through a bit of trudgery, the drudging. And uh, the great thing about wildebeest is they're not very bright. They're very prolific. And I was on my tummy in a ditch, um, and they all just walked past. I was not. No, no. I was fine. If I'd got up, they would have run off. I just, it would have been a bit awkward if uh, a lion had started hunting around there because, yeah. Um, it's the old ones are the best. Zebras, they're very graphic. So if you're going on safari, you know, grab a zebra. They're, they're great fun. They're great fun. They're very, very graphic. Um, a little bit of, uh, again, looking at the character of the animal. For this one, I felt that uh, there was some menace in this lioness, which is, uh, which is you know, it's not a, not a common visual for, uh, for um, it's not a Christmas card. No, it was a dead, it was a dead wildebeest. And um, 
we were shooting this and she came across it and we were shooting it uh, and we were on, on the other side of a little Corongo ditch and we couldn't move left or right. We couldn't move back so we didn't get further away. We couldn't move to the side because of the Corongo and the wind was coming this way towards us. This was rotting. It was really, really smelly. So again, more cheetah, and this is, you know, this is a speech bubble required here. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> Elephant portrait, beautiful light. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a couple more chimp portraits here. This one, um, this one again. I feel there's something there's something quite serious about it. There's there's thought in the eyes. It's dark. It's more sort of Planet of the Chimps kind of feel. It's not the sort of cheerful, happy chimp kind of thing that you see often in monkey pictures. And and I and I I like that. I like that in animal portraits. And again here you see you've got a very old chimp. See his white beard. See his sort of wrinkled face. Um, you can see here he's getting he's getting very old. Real really tight crop because and you can see you can see his eyes looking away down here, and you sort of think you know that guy what's he been up to what's he been doing? Don't mess with me, I'm an old heavy duty chimp. Right, I got a little series here just to show how one. Uh, there's four pictures, and it's one, uh, one session, probably about five minutes, how in four pictures you can show a different characteristics um, of the same creature. So here we've got a lioness who's tearing up a buffalo. Here she's looking really mean, slightly less mean, and now she's a tabby cat. So it's amazing what you can do just being there and watching and shooting, you get these very different characteristics. Yep. Um, it's a green turtle. Yep. It's a green turtle hatchling. And it's, it's probably five minutes out of its shell on the coast and it's tootling off towards the sea to get eaten by a shark. Um, very good. So again, this is the uh, long exposure, um, panning and moving. You can see the direction that my camera was going. I'd like to say intentionally it was going down an angle, but that wouldn't necessarily be true. Um, identifiable, I believe. It's a little monkey. It's a baby baboon. Um, now, these things, you know, as soon as they lose their ability to identify, then chuck it out. But it's, it's fun to try. Fun to try, try at home with your kids and everything. With, well, with dogs, kids, so the same thing. Um, thanks. <laughs> Sorry? Yes, it stands out, doesn't it? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So here, this is a, a color image that I've converted uh, in my attempt to get up in the digital kingdom. Um, it's a tree and an elephant. What I like about it is the elephant comes across very small in the, in the, with the big tree. All right, um, here's another story. Sometimes in wildlife photography, you don't always have the opportunity to shoot something full frame, crystal clear, and it's an amazing photograph uh, because of the story. This is something I've never seen before, uh, and many guide friends of mine have never even heard of it. This is a brand new wildebeest, and you can still see it's... Uh, umbilical cord, so it's not even a day old, okay? They come out, when they're born, they, they, they're walking in about three or five minutes. These are buffalo. These are the buffalo. Well, this little fella, his parents were on the other side of this big buffalo herd, his mother, so I should say, sorry, on the other side. And so, so he, he didn't know either how to get through or whether these were his or not, because he was too young. 
So what happened is he approached these buffalo and these buffalo scared him off, you know, with the horns, go away, go away, go away. And then they did this. You know, it's not going to win any photographic awards, but it is, it's in the air. This thing is in the air. So it, uh, to be honest, I don't know. It ran off. It actually ran off, but it was, it, they did this two times. Um, but it's nature because the buffalo is terrified. You know, they don't know what this thing is. They've got no idea. It smells wrong to them. They don't understand. And so they want to get rid of it. So they do that. But it, yeah, whew, it, was, it, was a, it was a shocker. It's a landscape with the elephant. Again, putting the animal into its environment. As was, yes. Cloudy day. Cloudy day. Not Velvia. Not Velvia, no. D800. D3. D800 or D3, yeah. Um, elephants again here, um, panning, along, panning along that way with them as they go. Slow shutter speed. Here, um, cheetah, we've got a little cheetah series now. This is in the Serengeti. It's by Lake and Dutu here. Um, and it's very bleachy. I like it. Uh, I, I created this by slightly overexposing. And she's, she's actually looking here. You can see that she's right on her tiptoes. She's looking at some uh, Thompson's gazelles over here. She's ready to go. Here, here it's very unusual to see this. Um, this, is a, this is a technique which I've been doing for a while, and it's uh, uh, you completely blow out the background and you hump, you know, hoof up the contrast, the black and the white. And it's, it's a very effective sort of dynamic, I find, personally, um, for me. Four cheetahs on the horizon, probably. Running cheetah. It's amazing. You can see the sort of the movement here of, of its. Yeah. And again, just a, this is a portrait here. And this, this works for me better just because I put this one slightly out. So probably shooting at about f5.6, something like that, just to make sure this one is out slightly soft. Okay, this is, uh, this is a little, uh, <laughs> there's two, two zebras. I convert it into black and white, put the border on because it's a, quite an unusual picture. They're, 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 uh, the, yeah, they're, are, they're displaying to each other um, who's, uh, you know, well, anyway. Uh, it's not the bum they're displaying. <laughs> no. Anyway, I'm not going to point it out. Yeah, so <laughs> exactly. There you go. So again, here um, more more. And the thing is, you know, because the head and the legs are chopped off, it doesn't matter because it's immediately identifiable as a, identifiable as a, a zebra. Character of animals. Sorry, I really, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Sorry. Character of animals. Here, the guy is just. He's just chilling out. You see the hand at the bottom, his face, he's tired. He's a young baboon, been running around all day, and he's looking at us saying, really? Just go away. Trying to capture the, capture the character of the animals somehow. And again, just, you know, while I'm out there, I'm always thinking maybe what can I do with this to create a graphic, create an image that is a bit unusual. Giraffes are always really tall. So by putting him right at the bottom and in the middle, he looks like a midget. Um, so this one, um, this is uh, multi-movement of the camera. So this is panning, jiggling, wiggling, and everything. Um, I will come up with a technical term at some point, or I will look up, look up what Manet does or something. But uh, so this is, uh, again, a long exposure. It's at sunset. So I've got the flexibility on my camera to, to put the, uh, the shutter speed right down and choose what, uh, 
choose what um, aperture, and and then just literally shaking the camera. And Is the camera just walking at all? No. Just handheld. Yeah, just handheld. Uh, you know, quite often if you want to do a panning shot um, that's that's clean, really clean, then support it on a tripod. You know, like shooting F1 or something like that, shooting cars, or if you want to shoot something very, very straight on a tripod. I tend to find personally, I, uh, well, as you've seen, I tend to wiggle it about a bit. Well, I think we've seen that picture. Um, full, I think, rather than pregnant. And lions go in trees for a variety of reasons, but usually to escape heat, bugs, people. So here's another one. There she is. And I've, I've, uh, I've just played with the contrast here just to get it, get it a bit stronger. Right, what's this? It's the Labrador at home. Brilliant. So, so it's interesting. I thought what I'd do is I'd use this as, because usually, usually I'm very good at defining what, what picture works and what picture doesn't. So if you think this works as an image for you, it is a hippo in a river, hands up. If it doesn't, let me, let me know. Hands up, anyone who likes this image. OK, brilliant. Much less than half. Good, I thought so. Thank you. OK, again, using, using that technique of whiting, whiting out the background, making the animal look really small in a really big space. Same thing, different technique. Um, I'm aware of the theory of thirds, but quite often, uh, quite often you can veer off and see see how it works. Uh, that just popped in just these are all flies. It's a lake. Yeah, these are all flies on the water surface. So this is uh yeah, this is Killy. So we're on to a few landscapes very quickly, and then, uh, then we're done. The, um, you know, I'm not a landscapes photographer. I'm a wildlife photographer. Um, I'm sure you all know Charlie Waite. Um, a, a friend of mine uh, recently moved to Tanzania as his nephew, which, uh, which is quite good fun. So we should be doing some work together soon. Again, just looking at shooting different things at different angles. A bit of burnt out sun reflecting on the water, some, some Lake Kariba trees sticking out there. OK, so this is Aldonia Lengai. This is a, a, a live volcano in Tanzania, northern Tanzania. Um, and there's, uh, it's very interesting, standing from the same shot, you can shoot it in you know, all sorts of different ways. Uh, when we climbed up it, in fact, there was, uh, we were walking around on the top. And you could look through holes and see lava rushing past. We recently found out that's that's not ideal thing to be doing. <laughs> They've closed it, obviously. Um, so here you go, same position five minutes later. That's Mount Kenya. Using a bit of uh, different color, colors, greens and blues. Big, strong, stormy skies and sunlight always work nicely. Late afternoon sun. This is the Ngorongoro Crater. If anyone's been there? Right. Lunar rainbows. So this is shot, uh, this is shot about 10, 11 at night. Um, with, it's about a... 45 second exposure. You can see the stars. See the stars here? It's a twin lunar rainbow. So this is Vic Falls, um, which obviously has permanent rainbows because of the spray that falls. And under the full moon, the light is strong enough to create one. And then here, you can see the other. Anyway, it's very, obviously, it's very rare to see lunar rainbows because 
For example, in England, if it's raining, it's cloudy. Um, so you don't, the moonlight doesn't come through. Um, I love shooting under the moon and uh, I love shooting at night. Some, some stars and some sort of bush fires in the distance. This is a national park here. That was about a three hour exposure there. As you can tell, one, two, three, four, one, two. And that's south. So, um, I've also, something I've been doing sort of, it's sort of for fun really, but I found that people coming on the workshops really enjoy doing this. This is taken at night, so this is a night picture. It's about 10 o'clock, you can see the stars here. See the stars? Um, and and the, under the full moon, the light is so strong that you, get, you can even get all these colors out. It's amazing. And uh, I'm mucking around really, but um, this, this is on the, on, the, on the original raw image here. It's a laser. So it's like this. It's like this, except uh, it's from South Africa. The actual ray is exactly line plated, but the, the laser is a you know, 30 gazillion megawatt versus this one megawatt. Um, and so you, you can, it actually works on the tree. Um, painting with light, it's good fun. I've got a couple more things here, I think. Uh, there you go. This was actually my first one, and uh, it's quite good fun. You can see here where the, where the torch, where you put the torch behind your hand like that to turn it off, and actually you just get a bit of the light come through the hand. So here again, full moon. That's actually a moon, the moonrise there. And this is, these trees are called baobabs. Um, they're baobabs and uh, they're iconically African. And this is a, a baobab that I drew with a torch. Um, it was quite interesting because it's actually about life size. It's, it's, it's very high. And I had a torch on a huge long pole and sorts of things. It's good fun. This is another night shot. You can see the stars up here and just lighting the, lighting the tree with a torch. You see, these are, these are moon shadows. Uh, it's about a minute. Yeah. And not too wide open, because otherwise, you know, you lose sharpness. Okay, here's again, it's just what you can do at night, mucking about. Um, so I, the camera's on a tripod, you're running around, torch around this guy, and uh, the moon fires art. And here's more art. So this is my elephant. Okay, so here, this, is, uh, this was actually from a workshop. It's just a fun picture. This is just teaching uh, about painting with light. And these are just two, two guys who are on the course. Around, really. Right, that's, I'm just going to end on that shot because that is the print that we have here.